Okay, just so I have this straight. If I give you my credit card information, you're going to fix my Windows computer over the telephone, huh? Okay, well, listen, uh, Jason from the Tri-State area, why don't you go ask your boss for a raise, and also, go ask him for a window office, because you sound as though you're down in the basement with 45 other people who sound just like you! Hi, I'm Gary Bowden, and we're going to take a look at typesetting in Zara right now. Not typography, but typesetting. How to make your words look terrific on the page. So come on! Before you begin working on the tutorials, I want you to go to zarazone.com forward slash tutorials, click the download button to get the files, and then download font files from Font Squirrel by clicking on the URLs listed on this page. You're going to want the font family called Josephine. Download that and install it. And then you'll need the headline font Chunk 5. Once you've got those both downloaded and installed, let's begin by taking a look at the convenience and power of text styles in Zara. Text styles are analogous to the color styles that you establish in Zara, except any font, any font size, letting, tabs, those can all be saved to a style and applied to other blocks of unstyled text. I want you to open the chip heads layout now and uh, choose the text tool and you're going to create a style. Highlight that big N that's done in chunk 5, choose create style, and then type headline in the box. Click OK. And this headline style is available to every page in this document. Now why don't you highlight the body text and let's call this body copy. Now that you have these styles defined, I want you to add a page to the current page. You can do that by right clicking. And then Go open the Pizza Perfect document, and as you can see, Times New Roman and Ariel are not the most inspired choices of typefaces, but wait a second. Press Ctrl A to select all, Ctrl C to copy, and then in the Chips Heads new page, press Ctrl Shift V to paste in place. With the text tool, choose the headline, and then choose Headline from the styles. The point size is too large, but you can correct that and I'm going to do a little manual sizing. Now you can quadruple click on a paragraph section and then choose body copy and you'll see here that the body copy is a little snazzier. Well, anything is snazzier than Arial. And you can do that to the uh, next section and so on and so forth or select all the body copy as I'm going to do here in a moment and then choose the body copy style. So any page you paste into this document you can style. This is fun and a quick way to add conformity to multiple pages. I'm going to show you a little bit about Super and Subscript now. Uh, you may have heard of these under different names like little tiny text above and below the baseline. Superscript, and here's something neat you can do with this, is great for sign making because otherwise if you want to sell something for $2.99, $2.99 looks awful. Let's use Superscript instead. So why don't you try typing that and then type $2.99 without the dot. Highlight the 99 and then click on the superscript button. If you want the superscript to be a little bit larger, this is a no-brainer. What you do is you increase the point size with the stuff highlighted. Now usually 99 uh, in, in a price such as this has an underscore and you can do that with the rectangle tool. If you don't do it with the rectangle tool and you choose the underscore on the text tool styles, what you're going to wind up with is a style that looks punk, so don't do this. Let's take a look at subscript now. Uh, one of the most common things that you will see that's done in subscript are molecules such as H2O. The street name for that is water. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to apply a style that I saved earlier to this document to make the text a little bit larger. If you highlight the two and then click on the subscript button on the info bar, you have perfect water. And here's another example of subscript. Although baseline shift might sound like a dance, it's not. It's simply taking selected characters and moving them up or down relative to characters that have not been chosen. 
One of the most common examples of good baseline shifting in design are your traditional motivational posters where the first and last letter are a little bit larger than the other characters. What you want to do to create that is to highlight everything except the first or last letter and then create a smaller typeface for the ones in between. Now you'll notice here that the baseline, uh, actually the top of these characters, is not even. So what you want to do is select all those characters except the D and the N. and then click the baseline button and I've got a uh, guide going here so I can do this precisely and increase that until the rest of the characters are all flush with the D and the N. That's simple, that's easy. I'm going to uh, make this a little bit larger and one of the things to uh, finish off a beautiful poster such as this is to select the elements, press Control shift L and uh, align these three elements vertically. Simple, quick, effective use of baseline shift as well as a couple other features in Zara. Coming up now is an example of character spacing called tracking in Zara. This is the distance between characters and I've got an example here. Uh, I've made a party mix CD and the alignment of the titles and artists is left justified you can see here and what I would like to do is I would like to make that force justified so the left and the right are fully justified and as you can see here some of the character spacing some of the uh, spacing between words is not very good so what I'd like you to do is to in your own document or you can use this one is after you have the characters fully justified, select stuff that looks as though it could come together a little bit more. For example, on this first line, there's a bad break. So let's take the tracking down. Then I've taken the words Ghostbusters. If you lessen the tracking, if you, if you make the tracking tighter, you can bring that line up. Now I'm going to show you another little trick here, and this is called a soft break or soft carriage return and that's shift enter and as you can see here the mamas and papas uh, are now a complete name on this line so remember soft breaks are also good when you've got uh, full justification now the text here for the mamas and papas uh, looks as though there's too much space between words so what you can do is increase tracking and I think you've probably seen this effect in magazines so the tracking between characters is a little too wide but overall the color of the page doesn't look so awkward and what I'm doing here is I am uh, increasing tracking on Oh Pretty Woman by Mr. Roy Orbison. And that looks pretty good. And I think I've shown you the three tricks, increasing, decreasing tracking, and using soft breaks. So on your next project, using fully justified text, you can make the text look a little better. I'm going to show you now custom bulleted lists. Bulleted lists in Zara are easy to create, but did you know that you can use anything you like as a bullet? You can use a character from a different font. You can also use a little illustration. What I'm doing here with the Pizza Perfect layout is I have created a bulleted list out of those three sections simply by highlighting everything and then clicking the bulleted list button on the info bar. However, I think, and you should think too, that the bulleted list would look a little more special if each bullet was a slice of pizza. So I'm taking a circle and intersecting it with a triangle to create a pizza slice. I'm moving it over to the layout. Let's make the uh, point of the pizza facing right. Let me zoom in here a little bit and make this a little bit larger. What you can do here is create a uh, rough crust shape with your favorite drawing tool and choose kind of a crusty color light gold is good and to get that to blend into what is apparently the tomato sauce you can use the uh, linear transparency here and finally to get that crust to conform to the pizza slice what you want to do is you want to select both the pizza slice and the crust shape and press Q
and what that does is that clips the crust shape to the pizza shape. The next step is a quick one and that's to right drag duplicate the pizza slice. I've done that and I'm going to uh, click on a color to make a drop shadow. Let's do about 60% and let's choose to recolor both shapes. That was that dialog box you saw there and make that mostly transparent so it blends with the wood in the back and what I want you to do is to select both shapes now press Control C to copy that shape to the clipboard and take the original and move it off the page. With the text tool, highlight all the text, right click, and then choose from the context menu, paste as list bullet, and bang! You've got pizza slices as bullets instead of the typical bullets. This can be done with just about any drawing. Now, one little other thing. Um, the three categories of toppings I think should be bolded, so I'm going to highlight them and bold here. Because hopefully, there's no reason now not to make your pages look textually perfect. And now I hope you now know at least one more thing than before watching this video, and that your own typographic adventures are productive and most of all, fun. My name is Gary Powton.